So, I shot my first real estate video, and this is how it went. What is going on guys? Welcome to a new video. Hope you're having a good one. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We talk about photography, videography stuff here. And today, as you can probably tell by the title of the video, we're talking about my first ever real estate video. Um, so I've never done one before, um, but a friend reached out to me and you know, he's doing like his own marketing thing where he's trying to build an agency and cater services towards um, some real estate agents. So of course that includes video and photo packages. And so he asked me if I could help them create like an example set that they could send to potential clients. So I was like, yeah, I'm down. That'd be really cool. I've always thought about like getting into like real estate videography and photography. And um, if this can lead to some more consistent work down the road, then why not? It's a win-win for everyone. So I was like, let's do it. And so I just want to kind of share my experience and uh, you know, how it went. You know, I used to do some of the, these kinds of videos on the channel back in university. Um, and you know, that's what this channel is all about. Just kind of like sharing some of my experiences and stuff. So I thought I would uh, go ahead and talk about it. But we did three main things. So we did a tour video with a real estate agent going through the house, talking about the house, and then a tour video without that. So just music and the house. And then finally, of course, some photos. So I just want to show you guys quickly the tour video and how that turned out. So that was the tour video, obviously without the real estate agent because it was just the house and some music laid over it. Uh, but I wanted to show that because it's a bit shorter and um, I just like how that one turned out a bit more than with the real estate agent. There are obviously some things definitely that I can improve on and that'll just come with, you know, doing more of these and, and more practice. Um, but a few of the things that like went wrong that day, like couldn't get the gimbal working because it didn't come charged from the rental place. So keep that in mind. If you're ever renting any sort of camera equipment, don't expect to come charged or with batteries or any of that type because it won't. Um, so that was kind of frustrating. So we had to like kind of sit around and wait. Luckily, you know, we took some other B-roll shots and we got some photos while we were waiting for that to charge. But most of the shots in this video were handheld. I had the camera strap around my neck and was just holding it out as straight as possible. And then of course, trying to move as steadily as possible. With all the B-roll shots, I was shooting in 60 frames per second so that I could slow it down in post. Um, and then also a lot of warp stabilizer in Premiere to kind of get those shots as smooth as possible. And honestly, I think it, it turned out pretty good. It doesn't look like too overly smooth or fake or anything. It was really just trying to minimize any sort of like small like camera shakes and that kind of thing. But that was definitely one thing. Um, the lighting was also a little bit challenging, especially in the basement and the bedrooms. Um, I really had to like pump up the ISO and the footage was starting to break down at that point because again, this is like a, a crop sensor camera, not great with low light, same with the lens um, at a variable like f3.5, 
Um, the other thing is the lens. Because I am shooting on an A6300, as you may or may not know, it's a crop sensor mirrorless camera. So the 16 to 55 is really like a 24 to 85 or 80 millimeter. And that's really not that wide. And for real estate stuff, I definitely think you need a bit wider than that. Um, you know, if I could get down to 16, I know there is like a 10 to 18 millimeter lens. Um, that is offered by Sony, but that cost $900 and I couldn't find one to rent. So I didn't get that. Um, but you know, if this is something that's on a more consistent basis, then I definitely think it would be worth that investment. Just not right now for one example video. Same with the gimbal too. And same with the drone as well, because it'd be, it's always sick with real estate videos when you can have like a nice drone shot. But this being a bungalow, a drone shot probably wasn't that necessary because you know it's just one level, so you can get a pretty good angle just standing on like the front lawn and stuff. But definitely if you're shooting like a big mansion, two-story home, drone shot would be super sick and show off some of the surrounding neighborhood and stuff too. Um, so yeah, that was like the tour video. I think one thing, you know, with the tour video with the real estate agent, really got to have like a really good script planned out throughout the house because it's really using it, the video as a selling tool, right? So you need to like sell the house, like pretending that the person watching through the screen is in the house and they need to know about this house, not just, you know, where the bedrooms and bathrooms are. I'm um, really trying to like sell them through that. So that's another thing definitely to improve on for next time. And then third thing, I think a big thing is like the equipment, just making sure you got everything ready to go like the day before and not renting a gimbal like the day of. But again, that's something that just comes with experience and not overestimating my skill with a, a gimbal because I was like, oh, I'll be able to pick it up like that, no problem. But it's not that easy as I found out. So there's definitely that as well. And then the photos, of course, I thought the photos, you know, pretty standard, um, you know, from like photos that I've seen watching, you know, consuming my own real estate content or consuming real estate content my own time um, you know just always trying to be in a corner and get as much of the room as possible as wide of an angle and I just found like the corners always work best and then getting each room from like two different angles so you can see it coming from one way and like the other way so you really get a feel of like how big the room is um, and then also using like natural lighting as much as possible to my advantage. No, oh, I always love shooting videos and you know, maybe real estate videos aren't the most exciting. I probably would have been pretty amped if it was like a sick house, but also really intimidated because I would have been like, wow, I don't wanna screw this up because it's like a multi-million dollar house. But you know, with this smaller bungalow, I think it was good to kind of start off with. Um, yeah, not super exciting, but I still enjoyed you know doing this video. Um, taking the photos and then of course putting everything together in the end. Um, it's of course always awesome when you send that video off and then the people who are part of the whole project see it and they're like wow this is awesome. So that felt really good and hopefully you know this can lead to some more consistent work uh, down the road. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, even if it wasn't, I know, probably the most entertaining video, but I just thought I would make a video about it because my YouTube channel, I thought it'd be a cool topic to talk about for anyone out there that is kind of doing a similar thing that I am, um, or thinking about doing real estate videos and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Next week, we're going to bring out some motorcycle footage. So if you're interested in that, definitely stick around and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.